sir the very basis of the bill has also been questioned that is whether the restricting of the capital of the institutions is at all needed it is our view that a developmental agency should be organizationally independent and its board professionalized having fully fed the industrial development bank of india since its infancy for a decade the reserve bank has placed it in a position of importance the government have therefore taken the view that the time has arrived to elevate the status of the development bank to that of the principal financial institution just as the reserve bank is the central bank of the country the life insurance corporation of india is the principal investment institution the development bank should achieve the status of the principal financial institution all the three being directly owned by the government the bill seeks to achieve this purpose further the board of the principal financial institution should reflect the various impulses of different states of india particularly those which are industrially backward as i have already explained you will see from clause 6 of the bill that in a board of 25 members excepting two who are government officials and two employees of the financial institutions the rest are professionals in the sense that they represent all india and state level financial institutions banks and various fields like science technology industry economics industrial cooperative marketing etc the reserve bank as the central bank of the country will be represented at the level of a deputy governor on the board and on the executive committee of the development bank the reserve bank is therefore in a position to continue to make its positive contribution to the operations of the development bank and through it of all the other financial institutions it has also been argued that after the restricting of the development bank neither the volume of credit to industry will increase nor will the cost of credit decrease and thus there is no economic rationales for the bill in any event the mobilization of resources and their channeling will be done in close coordination with the reserve bank of india having elevated the status of the idbi and made it statutorily responsible for the coordination the development bank and the other financial institutions will work with greater cohesion and to that extent there will be better development of resources all round a point has also been raised that with the transfer of the shareholding of the industrial development bank of india from the reserve bank to the government large industrial group could have easier access to institutional finance than before in the second note of dissent by my honorable friends a similar point has been made that the credit policies to be followed by the institutions have not been defined the policy of financing industry including small scale industry cooperatives etc and the large industrial groups is determined by government for implementing the policy of government it is perhaps not very material whether the industrial development bank of india is directly owned by government or owned through the reserve bank parliament has therefore the opportunity to oversee the policy being followed by the development bank and the other institutions in financing industry in general and the larger industrial groups in particular the honorable members have in their minute of dissent referred to the position that the employees representatives will not be elected on the board but will be selected in a manner prescribed by government they have referred to the practice prevailing in regard to the appointment of directors on the boards of the nationalized banks i may inform the house that in the case of the nationalized banks the scheme framed under the banking nationalization act does not provide as such for a direct election by workmen of their representatives on the boards of the banks and the representative is chosen out of a panel of three names suggested by the federation which on verification by the central labor commissioner 
has the largest number of workmen as members. A more or less similar procedure will be drawn up in the, this case also for selection of the employee's representatives. I now take this opportunity of paying a tribute to the services rendered by the Reserve Bank of India in feeding the Industrial Development Bank of India from its infancy and having brought it up to its present status so that it could take up the leadership of the other financial institutions independently. As I have already stated earlier, the Industrial Development Bank of India will continue to be as much as concern of the Reserve Bank as of the government in the new setup as well. I have every hope that the Development Bank as the principal financial institutions in the field of industrial finance with its enlarged role should be able to play an effective part in the balanced industrial development of the country in accordance with national priority and aspirations. This has been provided in the preamble by the Joint Committee constituted by the concerned ministry. Sir, a natural calamity seems to be now a very regular feature. This year there are several states which are seriously affected by drought. In some states, it is the second successive year of drought and in some other states, it is almost the third successive year. It means that large sum of money will have to be provided and I trust the priorities will be respected. We cannot go on putting up with a situation in which hundreds of thousands of villages today are without drinking water. Where from any drinking water is to be provided is not even known. The state governments do not know what to do with it. It is not money alone that matters, so large sums of money will have to be provided to ensure that drinking water is made available to villages. The finance minister knows that farmers must be given remunerative price. Mr. Finance Minister, I would request your attention to this particular point. You have said that by giving remunerative prices to farmers in respect of sugar, you have seen immediately the result and the manner in which the sugar cultivation improved, increased and you have larger sugar production. That is exactly what we say. If you give remunerative price to farmers for what they produce, not only will you be doing justice to them, but you also will ensure increased production. Productivity is one of your major or to be one of your major bugbears. It is the one thing in which you are not being successful whether it is on the agricultural front or on the industrial front. I hope that this is something to which you will pay greater attention. When the finance minister started his budgetary exercise in 1998, he endeavored to do two things. One was to loosen the tight regulatory grip that he had on industry. Government decided to loosen it a little bit. The second thing that they had decided to do was to a streamline the fiscal and budgetary process so as to enhance revenue collection and stabilize the business and trade. On both these fronts, subsequent developments have been somewhat hesitant but in some cases they are contradictory also. So far as loosening the tight grip that government has on the industry, I think government has realized that by really loosening it in a judicious way, there has been tremendous improvement in the situation. Why that process has stopped, I don't know. But I would recommend to the finance minister that loosening of the control in a selective way is a highly desirable process and to con continue if you want to ensure that productivity increases. Productivity can only increase if there is less and less restrictions and fewer restrictions. Even more than that, please note that what is not yet changed is the delay that takes place in decision making. The delay in decision making has a disastrous effect in many ways. I would say that unless the finance minister or rather the entire government makes a decisive and determined effort in this direction, they will find that many of their goods policy decisions may also not produce the desired results. So far as streamlining of the fiscal and budgetary process is concerned, I have already said that the streamlining has been successful up to a point, but it is the budgetary process where the finance minister desired to have an open policy that have something in this as such. 
He has been in fact making a budget every month in the sense that fiscal changes that are frequently being made, the way in which exercise duties are being changed and changed in significant way give that impression. Some of the changes that are being made may have really disastrous effect on industry. We do not know the reasons as to why these changes are being made.